Uh, but we're closer to the good stuff, so. I'm so thrilled to uh, welcome you here today, and you are going to be really, really happy that you came. We are blessed uh, to have today's performer, but before we do commercials, of course, always, uh, next month, since we're almost at the end of February, uh, we will be bringing you, the Friends will be bringing you all kinds of programs on Friday morning at 10 o'clock. We have Alice Tromley coming back, you know Alice, and uh, we also have uh, some discussions. Do you remember the lady that came, do you remember when Julia Child came to Teaneck? Who remembers that? That lady. Well, she's coming back, only I understand she's Eleanor Roosevelt. So she's a fantastic performer, as I'm sure those of you who saw it will agree. So we have a lot of wonderful things that are coming to the Friends on Friday mornings and also on Sunday afternoons. Uh, we have another concert coming. We have a unfortunately very timely movie coming. And uh, I hope you'll plan to spend some of your precious Sundays and Friday mornings with us. I also recommend to you all kinds of other wonderful things that are happening at the library. We have craft programs, we have a crochet club, we have a book club, we have a cookbook club, we have an environmental book club, we have all kinds of things coming on in this library. And if you are uh, a, a Teaneck resident, well, for heaven's sakes, come on down here. And this program, and lots of the programs here at the library, as well as equipment and studies and liaisons with the public, is paid for by you, the friends of the library. So who among you is a friend of the library? Yay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. But you know you're always welcome uh, regardless. So on the back table, you will find a flyer like this that has the listing for all of the things that are happening at the library during the month of March. Now, that is a long list. So come on down and check it out. Next month, uh, specifically uh, the Friday morning programs, and also on the 12th of March, we will be screening the movie Till, which uh, some of us lived through that experience and uh, remember it. And I hope that you will plan on joining us. It, it should be very provoking. Oh. It's, uh, and you'll hear me say it again, it's horrifyingly relevant. And who would have thought 70 years ago uh, that we would still be having to deal with exactly this. So. I hope you'll come. And then, to on a lighter note, we will see the return of our dear, dear friend, classical pianist, Renee Guerrero, who is just, her love of the people just comes out through the ends of her fingers somehow. <laughs> and she seems to be organically one with the piano. And it's a, she's terrific, and she'll play all kinds of wonderful things that you will enjoy. So I hope you'll plan to do that and look for our posters, uh, the Till poster, and you'll also look for um, the Renee program. Well, I see people are still coming in. Here at the Friends, and I will be putting mine back on, we require masks for our programs. If it's a Friends-sponsored program, uh, we care about you. <laughs> Uh, this is just a precaution. It can't hurt, right? What can it hurt? So, you'll leave it on. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. We appreciate your cooperation. So now I have the joy and privilege of welcoming to Teaneck again, and it's just been way too long, I said to him earlier, Francisco Roldan, who is a master in the classical tradition 
uh, you know, you're thinking Andrei Segovia, Julian Breen. Well, let me tell you, he uh, incarnates that wonderful tradition. And he's been spending a lot of time at the Mel Metropolitan Museum of Art. But we, he gives concerts there and uh, among other places, internationally, world-renowned, Mr. Roldan. So we are really um, privileged. And you will see after the show, there are some CDs in the back. And Elsa, everybody say, hi to Elsa, hi Elsa. Uh, Elsa will um, be glad to uh, help you make some selections of CDs. There are five different ones. And one of them, as I said earlier to some of you, is a lot about today's program. So there's a tremendous variety. There's classical music, there's Bach, and there's mu singing accompanying the music. So it's really something worthwhile. And uh, take a look. It makes a wonderful gift to yourself. <laughs> Why not start at the top? And now it is my joy to introduce Francisco Rodan. need to tune my instrument. We're on one and out of tune instrument. <laughs> One time I was playing with a string quartet in, in Manhattan and I made sure I reminded the whole string quartet to turn off their phones and we played the piece and then I came back and I realized my phone was still on. <laughs> and I had told them, like, make sure your phones are off. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out on a brisk afternoon uh, and cloudy afternoon. Um, um, welcome to a concert of music from warm Latin America. So um, I'm going to start with uh, three pieces. The first piece is going to be um, Preludio de Adios, which means the goodbye prelude. And it's uh, uh, written by uh, Alfonso Montes. And, uh, it's, he wrote it when he was leaving. He had to leave Venezuela and couldn't go back, and so he was missing his family. And this is uh, the goodbye prelude, Preludio de Dios, by Alfonso Montes. <laughs>
The second piece I'm going to play is from Puerto Rico, which I had the pleasure of uh, visiting with my, my wife and daughter last summer for vacation. And we, it's the first time I've been there, and it's fantastic. I highly recommend it as a great vacation place. Um, as you'll hear from this uh, song, the people are very warm. And this is uh, a piece called Seis uh, Milonga. And a milonga is a form from Argentina. It's derived from the tango. So here we see the crisscrossing of musical cultures in the world today. And we hear a Puerto Rican taking um, an Argentinian form and making it his own. So this is Seis Milonga by um, Ernesto Cordero. Thank you. 
The next piece, uh, Mangore, is a dedication by uh, Jorge Morel, who's the Argentinian composer. Uh, and Jorge Morel wrote this piece dedicated to Agustin Barrios, who you'll hear later in the program. We, uh, I'm going to play a couple of pieces of his. Um, and he's a Paraguayan composer, Agustin Barrios, who wrote over 300 pieces for the guitar, and it, they're amazing. Um, so Jorge Morel wrote this piece, Mangore, which is the third last name, the second last name of Agustin Barrios Mangore. Um, and uh, as you'll hear, it's a very joyful piece, and uh, I think it very much uh, describes the joy that Barrios has brought to all of us. So this is Mangore by Jorge Morel. As you will hear in this program, uh, Latin America, uh, American music has a lot of variety and uh, all different kinds of forms. Even within those three pieces, they, they were all very completely different, but they still have that Latin American flavor. Um, and the same goes for all the rest of the pieces you'll hear today. Next, we're going to go to Cuba for the music of Leo Brower, who's a living composer. And I had the honor of playing for him uh, in a, a tribute concert uh, three years ago when he first came to the United States for the first time in many, many years. 
uh, and he's, he was, I think, 80 at the time. I'm not sure. He's probably 83 by now or so. Um, and he's just such a, an incredible person and very generous. So I'm going to uh, play a piece called uh, Cancion de Cuna, which is a cradle song. So um, it, it, the melody is actually an old melody that, was, that is and was sung by many uh, parents to their children to put them to sleep. And this is Cancion de Cuna, and it's, uh, the, the original tune is Duerme Negrito. Um, I'm going to uh, put in a little piece by Brower in here uh, before the next piece that's not on the program and it's called uh, Danza Caracteristica or Characteristic Dance and it's uh, based on a children's song which is called Quítate de la Cera and it goes Quítate de la Cera, Quítate de la Cera and it means get off the sidewalk. <laughs> so, this is uh, Danza Caracteristica by Leo Brower.
Next, uh, we go to the Peace of Thunder program that's called Danza del Altiplano, which is Dance of the High Plains. Uh, and these are the high plains of Bolivia. So uh, again, here we see the cross-cultural um, that uh, musicians are going through. And here's a Cuban, Leo Brower from an island in the Caribbean, um, adapting a form from Bolivia where it's cold and up in the Andes. And uh, you'll hear some drumming and also maybe a couple of birds. So this is Danza del Altiplano by Leo Brower. The next two pieces are by Agustin Barrios, uh, who we heard a uh, uh, piece that was written in his honor by Jorge Morel earlier on, Mangoré. And we're going to hear two pieces of his. Uh, the first one is called Las Abejas, which means the bees. Thank you. 
And uh, the last piece before the intermission is going to uh, be um, Vals Opus 8, number 4, and it's a waltz.
can help you out. Five minutes.
For some reason, and I should have said it earlier, my bad. If for a reason you have to leave before the end of the concert, I feel sorry for you for that. But please leave through the back door. It's a little disconcerting uh, here. Uh, so again, he's someplace. Uh, I wanted to also mention that uh, somebody asked me, and it was a good question. So what do you do with all the money that you raise from the memberships and the book drives and all those things? I go to Florida. No, I'm kidding. We, we, we are in, yeah, you want to know where I was? Yeah. And next, maybe next year you send me a little further. Um, I wanted to let you know that the Friends, and there are some officers, some dignitaries of the Friends here helping me out. We are an all-volunteer organization. So every single nickel, and nickels count, every single nickel, dime, and penny we spend putting back into some kind of effort on, on uh, behalf of the library. So I guarantee you that my salary, which I'm tripling next year, <laughs> and Steve, I mean, he's going to get four times what I paid him last year because he does so much work. So we're an all-volunteer organization. Thank you. Are you kidding? So now it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome back to the stage Francisco Rodan. <laughs> The next piece I'd like to play is a piece that I wrote. Um, I sometimes also compose. I uh, wrote this piece a couple of years ago, and it's called uh, Preludio or Prelude Number no. One. Uh, this is my piece. <laughs>
so much. Um, the next piece I'd like to play is by Raphael Landestoy. Uh, many years ago, in probably in the late 90s, I was playing a concert in Manhattan, and at the end of the concert, this uh, elderly gentleman, very well dressed in a beautiful suit, came up to me with a a piece of music and said, you know, I want you to play my music. And that was Raphael Landis' toy. So I brought the pieces home and I started reading them and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing music. So um, there, were, there were nine pieces in that uh, uh, booklet and I recorded them there in one of the CDs in the back. But subsequently, he also told me a few years later, he said, you know, Francisco, I have more pieces in my head, but my eyesight's going and I can't really write them down. So I said, come on over to my house, we'll write them down. So he's a pianist, and he came over to my house, and I had two guitars. He picked up one of the guitars and just started playing. I, I couldn't believe how well he played the guitar. I wasn't expecting that at all. So we wrote, wrote down six more pieces. And one of them is the piece that I'm going to play now, which is Vals de Tilsia. And Tilsia was a very good friend of his, and I had the pleasure of meeting her. It's a very warm and beautiful person. And I think that this piece uh, really uh, expresses the essence of Tilsia. So it says, Vals de Tilsia or the Waltz of Tilsia? <laughs> so much. Um, the next piece is by Ignacio Figueredo, who was a harpist uh, in Venezuela, and there's a Venezuelan harp, which is a, a little bit smaller, and it's not the same as the classical harp, and it's used in uh, Venezuelan folk music, especially in the form of joropo, um, and Ignacio Figueredo was discovered by a television crew in the 50s and 60s that was traveling through, the, uh, through Venezuela, just, you know, looking to see what people had, and they heard this a harp is playing and they discovered him and he did not know how to read or write music. So um, this piece that I'm going to play right now was transcribed for the guitar by the great Venezuelan guitarist Alirio Diaz. So this is uh, Los Cajuaritos and Cajuaritos is it's like the New Yorkers. It's, there's a, a place in Venezuela called Cajuaro. So Los Cajuaritos means the people from Cajuaro. So this is Los Cajuaritos by Ignacio Figueredo. Thank you.
I think you can hear how uh, Alirio Diaz captured the feeling of the harp with all those uh, little drum, drum, drum. There was a lot of uh, great arranging in that piece. And also, I hope that as you're hearing all this music, that you see the great variety, variety of music and uh, forms that come from Latin America. The next piece is, come, is from Argentina, and it's by the uh, great bandoneonist. A bandoneon is kind of like an accordion, uh, but it's uh, uh, more square, not, not necessarily long. Not square, it's, it has a, like a, I don't know if it's a hexagon or octagon, but it's, and it's played like, like an accordion. And uh, Astro Piazzolla really became the champion of that. And he is known to be the person who took tango to a new level. Uh, the tango in, South, um, in Argentina um, was fantastic and it was very traditional. And then uh, Astro Piazzolla, who lived in New York for many years, also heard all this jazz in New York and he started incorporating it into it and uh, this is the result of what he became. So we're gonna hear Verano Porteño and uh, Verano Porteño means summer in the port city and the port city is uh, Buenos Aires. So this is summer in Buenos Aires or Verano Porteño and uh, I think you'll hear um, the busyness of the day and people walking and going all over the place and then in the middle section uh, maybe a nice cafe in Argentina having a glass of wine and talking with friends. So this is Verano Porteño.
so much. Um, the next piece, we go back to Agustin Barrios again. And we're going to play, I'm, I'm going to play a piece, Don Perez Freire, which Don means Mr. in Spanish. So like if you know Francisco, you could say Don Francisco or Don Michael, you know, so Don means Mr. And Perez Freire it was a student of Agustin Barrios, and I guess he must have been a really good student and a very good friend of his because he dedicated the piece to him and named it after him, Don Perez Freire. And it's a tango, and you'll hear that it's an old-fashioned tango. This is before uh, Piazzolla came. So this is um, a Paraguayan tango. Paraguay is right next door to Argentina. So this is Don Perez Freire. so much. It's such a pleasure to be back here and to be playing for you. Uh, and it's fantastic. Thank you so much, Sandy, for inviting me to come and play again. 
and uh, that you're with such a great audience. This is my last piece, and I'm going to play a piece again by Jorge Morel, who did the Mangore in the first half, and this is uh, called La Misionera. La Misionera was a pop song or a popular song in the um, Argentina in their early 40s and 50s, and uh, Jorge Morel adapted it to the guitar. And again, thank you. I'm going to play a piece uh, that's called uh, El Colibri, which is The Hummingbird, and it's by uh, the Argentinian composer Julio Sagreras. Thank you. 